Um, hello everyone and welcome to our pitch on the Patient First Assessment Tool. We're very excited to show you what we've made, but we do uh, want to introduce ourselves really quickly. Um, so we've got Tim, um, Katie, Sunil, Angelo, <laughs> Shakti and me, Leah. Sorry, I don't, I'm not good at things. <laughs> um, yeah, so we want to start off with a quick uh, story. So in a Texas airport, they had so many complaints from passengers who were waiting, spending dead time waiting for their baggage. They found that when they increased the distance time, the journey time between the airplane and the carousel, the complaints went to zero. People <laughs> hate dead time, sitting around, waiting, doing nothing with that time. And patients are the same as passengers. So our solution aims to utilize this dead time to improve the healthcare experience. So on the screen next, you will see a role play demonstration of how our tool will be used in the waiting room. We have got a QR code if anyone does want to have a go at filling this out while we speak. Um, so we're trying to do a lot at once. <laughs> we propose a comprehensive patient-centric interactive tool that integrates with the local electronic patient record, which we call the patient first assessment tool. So clinicians will no longer need to spend precious consultation time on routine questions. Our tool automates data collection, allowing patients to input their information while waiting to be seen. The information is sent to the clinician before seeing the patient, allowing them to gain an instant overview of the patient's history. With more time on hand, clinicians can now delve into a patient's history more comprehensively, ensuring a more holistic approach to care. The purpose of our solution is not to triage patients, but rather to automate data collection and summarization to streamline the patient journey. So to illustrate what the patient journey looks like, so first patients will arrive in the emergency department um, and when they check in with the receptionist, they will be prompted to access the patient first portal. So if the patient has their own device, like in the example above, they can access the system using a QR code or a link and fill in the assessment tool. If they don't have their own device, like in the example below, they are able to use a loan device by the, uh, supplied by the department. And we have aimed to make the form as accessible to fill out as possible. But for patients that can't fit out themselves, many will have attended with a family member or carer who can assist them, or there will be volunteers or the receptionist can assist them. When the patient has filled in their assessment tool, it gets uploaded to our database, which allows the physician to view responses from patients waiting in the ED. In future versions, responses would be transferred to the electronic medical record for review by the healthcare professional responsible for the patient's care. Sure. So, on the next slide, I'll show you what an ED doctor generally has to do. So we have a performer that we have to fill by hand at Leicester, and this takes absolutely ages, about 15 minutes to write all the presenting complaint, history of presenting complaint. It's a lot of uh, very basic questions we have to ask again and again. It takes a lot of time, it detracts from the consultation itself. So uh, with the survey that we've built, you can ask very uh, basic questions, and a layman can respond in a first-person perspective in basic replies and what we do is we have ChatGPT essentially summarizing um, the survey responses into, would you mind going back a slide? So play that video. You'll see um, this is the database that we've created on a platform called Phoenix and it allows us to interact with the responses and this is the summary. Uh, which essentially tells us the presenting complaint, history of presenting complaint, all summarized from uh, the survey responses. And so that way, we save a lot of time not having to write everything. And in the future, next slide, we'll have this all siloed in with the EPR at the local institutions so that um, certain fields get pre-populated right before you go see a patient. That way you don't have to type as much, you already know a lot going in, maybe you can narrow or even ask more wider questions that address the patient's ideas, concerns and expectations. Next. When creating Patient First, these were the main points that we wanted to achieve with our service. So our main goal is to provide a service that works not just for the patient but with the patient. Um, and the, we work towards ensuring the service could be accessed by a wide variety of patient groups. So our assessment tool already has a reading age of nine, uh, but our final version will incorporate the other factors that we've mentioned on this slide. 
We've already mentioned patient satisfaction in terms of time perception, which is the difference in how we perceive occupied time versus non-occupied time. So we hope that will reduce patient's frustration. We also hope that this will be useful to clinicians because early access to information will allow healthcare providers to gain a quick overview on the patient and begin to formulate differentials. And clinical time is arguably the most valuable commodity in the NHS. Clinicians shouldn't have to spend their time doing what a machine can do. By addressing the routine questions before the consultation, doctors can focus on addressing the patient's concerns and adopting a holistic approach. The responses to the patient first tool also have other uses, so they can be analyzed for research and QI purposes. Okay, so here we've got um, just a bit of a roadmap of where we'd like to take this product in the future. And the way that we've split this up is through our buckets of the most valuable value-add items that we think the patient first brings to the NHS. So I um, mentioned it already a couple of times, but re reductions in manual rework of data, improved patient experience, and improvement in diag diagnosis capabilities. So, and we put that across a kind of near term and then future later on down the road. Um, so we've already talked about the AI generation, the rework of the first person input into medi medically appropriate inputs, which then can feed later on into nerve center. That's where we want to get to. We want to stop having this re-key of information. So it goes from patient assessment tool into the EPR, box your uncle, everything's sorted. Um, then we've got the multi-language uh, translation made available. So this is about making it more accessible to patients. And then eventually where we'd like to go is have an appointment flow tracker. So this is where the, um, the product will effectively tell the patient where they are in their journey when they're actually in the surgery or at the hospital. So they know that they're gonna be seen by the next department or by the doctor. And ideally we'd like to put waiting times against that as well, just so they're fully updated about where they are in the process. And then improvements in diagnosis capabilities. We'd like, once the patients put all their data into PAT, we'd like to then forward them over to any necessary questionnaires like PHQ9 and CAGE and then also assign any follow-up assessments. So if they need an x-ray, we'd like them to get that directly from the inputs in PAT rather than a doctor having to review the inputs and then go, oh, okay, this patient needs an x-ray, and then bounce them over to x-ray. Um, and yeah, I think next slide. So, yeah, to conclude, <laughs> like, just to conclude, <laughs> this is a patient-centered system the whole purpose of this is to put the patient first because that's the name of the product but also we really want that too and the idea is you allow your doctor to focus on your patient's concerns put them at the center of the consultation rather than the doctor being a checklist robot saying do you have this do you have this do you have this you can say i can see that you've had this problem and this is something that's worrying about worrying you tell me more about that and ultimately that makes patients happier and it means that doctors can make the most of consultations thank you Well done. So, any questions? I've, I've completed your form. Is it really going over? Have you really built an? I'm going to ask a first question. Of, <laughs> have you really built an integration with OpenAI? Yes. So, have my Is responses? It, uh, yes. Have my responses so been? Let's, let's let's plug it into the HDI. We'll Give it a, a second. The, the first time I open it up, it takes a few extra seconds to. Yeah, do you want to plug it in? Do you want to plug it in? <laughs> what, what's this going on? Anybody else? Got Anybody else got a question here? Question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got something. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much for your presentation. So great to see patient-centered care, without a doubt. However, in a really busy ED, does the clinician is this going to cause an extra like thing for them in in practicality? Because you know we know how busy and stretched all of our A&Es are across the country. Does some, if I filled this in, and let's say I wasn't digitally literate, I haven't come in with anybody else, I'm sat there, yes, okay, I agree, it's dead time, but actually, I'm having a really bad day, I don't really want to fill in another form. <laughs> um, what's the, you know, what, what's the scenario for that patient who doesn't want to do it? Is it, is it fine, they just don't do it, and they're excluded? Um, and also, what if I have filled it in, but actually I'm, I'm not really tech savvy, I'm not really, you know, I don't know all the, the jargon, as some people would call it. So if I just wrote, I've got tummy problem, let's say, 
Um, I feel like somebody else is still going to need to come and ask me more questions, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. The whole point is to reduce the time that the clinician needs to spend going through mundane things because the NHS is so stretched. We want to use that data that the patient can enter on their system to kind of shift the needle so that when the doctor starts the consultation, they can have a bit of a head start. They don't need to start from the beginning. They know what the patient's problem is and they can direct their questions and investigations a bit more appropriately. For sure, if a patient's really against using a system like this, we're not going to force them to do anything. But ultimately, the idea is to inform the patient, educate them, and hopefully get their buy-in because we can say to them, this is going to help them to look after them better in a more efficient way. So hopefully, they spend less time in the waiting room. Can I add something to that? There's also an opt-out feature in the survey itself uh, that will be developed, which uh, lets us not send the data all over to OpenAI and instead displays it like down below where the database sorts the questions depending on presenting complaint and presents it in its raw fashion. So that way, if a patient doesn't want uh, big AI companies to know they have problems, then they can opt out of it. Do you really need AI to be able to reconfigure those it's, it's more so, questions, isn't it? It's more to uh, summarize it, really, okay. from first person to um, just yeah, what I put in is quite simple. You're yeah. saying if it was more complex, it would yeah. do a better job. Yeah. Any questions? You will let you go. Thank you. Um, I've got quite a few questions. We picked the one that I want. Um, so, <coughs> do you? Um, I'm assuming that this is this is a problem that that some of you have witnessed in in your work. Okay. Are you? Um, do you think anybody has attempted to uh, to do some, you know, do something in this area before? Are there are there already attempts out there, solutions out there that, that are trying to do this sort of thing, or do you think this is this is a, a, a novel thing? And, and if if this has been attempted before, have you have you had any thoughts about why you might be able to get you know get this one off the ground? Why why would what you're proposing be a thing that you could really get into you know get into real use in, in a setting? You wouldn't be thinking about NHS 111 questions no, or anything no. like that, Matt, no? No, gen genuinely, no. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just wondering if you've seen, seen any examples of people trying to do this sort of thing. I personally haven't seen any examples of this, but considering it's a very low-tech solution, offering a survey to someone in a &E, I would imagine it's probably done somewhere. Uh, but those responses gathered from the patient generally tend to be in the first-person perspective, and all the questions would be listed usually. So what we're doing new is summarizing all of that so that it, you can, a clinician can read it within a minute or two and then uh, auto-population of clerking templates as well. Uh, and that is what we're really solving more than anything. Does, does that answer your question? I, let, let me just clarify, I think it does, but let me just say what, what you're saying here is, um, thank you. So I think what you're saying is um, you are collecting data, but the thing that you are proposing, you're your proposed solution is actually about how you make that data quick exactly. and usable by the clinicians, yeah. rather than just being, let's collect all your stuff in the form and then present that to a clinician to have yeah. to read through. Okay, That's right. Understand. Okay, thank you. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll since Michael's been, or since Mike's been going through all these headaches, we're going to let him ask the first question. Sorry, this is a very mean question. It's, it's, it's okay, you can take it back, give it back. <laughs> Um, uh, it's more an observation than a question. Um, maybe Go on. The radio Go ahead. The room would have picked up one. It's a very subtle thing. So, I, I'm, is AI allowed to request uh, and justify ionising radiation in the UK? I think I think the answer is going to be no. But <laughs> there's a there's a there's a caveat there where when you've got a system which is clinically validated to do so. It can be done so, providing that it's under the supervision of a named doctor and a clinician who's responsible for it. I just realised nobody could hear you because I yeah. yeah. That's okay. I think you can. <laughs> but it's, it's, not sure it's, sure. it's also not recommending the treatment. No, no, but they talked about requesting ionising radiation. The, the road, which, the road, which the road, yeah, yeah, IMER is quite clear. The, 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 the roadmap road was that, that based on based I don't on what know those words. Says, 
can you undertake investigations before the patient's been seen by a doctor? So for example, you might have a scenario that in the assessment tool the patient says, you know what, I've actually got some breathlessness and I've got some chest pain. The idea would be that before the patient's then seen by a doctor and then they say, oh, go and have an ECG before you come back to me, yeah. they have an ECG first. Oh, de definitely, I, I was literally just yeah. picking up on the ionizing radiation point. <laughs> Sorry, but, but also just to clarify, the AI is involved in summarizing and creating that yeah. text block. A decision like what was just described could be based on the multiple choice answers that the patient fills yeah. out. If so they say a, yes a, to this, a patient still cannot request ionizing radiation. <laughs> I think you know, okay. being devil's advocate, like I said, a, doc, a, a, doctor could a doctor could review the data from here yeah. in combination with the checking data, triage data to say, let's get an x ray before I see the patient. Maybe. So, so, my question is uh, doesn't this already exist as triage? And how would this, would this replace triage? Uh, but there's a lot of risks going around that. Um, so that's the first bit. And the other bit is um, you said that the patient will be able to know times when they're going to be seen. But within an emergency department, it's always done in priority order. So how would you take that into account? Because priorities are continually changing in the emergency department. They said that, that was a future thing. So they haven't worked through that. No, I just knew that might be missed. The triage bit, I think this is pre-triage, so this would be to the person who is triaging them, but I will. So in terms of triage, it would not replace the triage nurse. I think that is a valuable skill to have, and I think only humans can properly uh, look at a, a person and pick up on the subtle signs that might be relevant after decades of experience. But a triage nurse would have to spend considerable amount of time actually writing or filling out parking performance and they can't do that at the moment. They write a sentence at most and it's often just, <coughs> are they dying? Are they yes. stable enough for now? Agree. Yes, I'm going back yeah. 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 One, one more question. Yeah, yeah one more question. Who's going? Your question's better than <laughs> <laughs> it's less of a question more than a statement, especially in Leicester with the multi uh, sort of cultural aspects of Leicester, a lot of people don't speak English. So I think something like this could be a real game changer in patients that don't speak English, um, in terms of getting the history that you want, um, especially given the time pressures that we've got at the minute. Um, it can be very difficult to elicit that history in a, in a sort of any um, time. So I think it would be a game changer for patients that don't speak English. Thank you. That's um, very impressive what you managed to do in 24 hours, um, definitely. Um, my concern with, or one like comment with this would be, as an SHO who's clerked the patient, gone through that proper proper about you sense of feeling and asked all those mundane questions, and then I found it a bit difficult, go to my senior consultant, and we come back and see the patient together, they invariably ask exactly the same questions I've asked, <laughs> say exactly, and despite me, you've already presented that information to them. And so I can see something, if I was to use this, I can see all of that, and then I would go see the patient, and I'll probably just ask the same questions again. And so I don't know how much, I don't know why clinicians do that, but consultants do it, I'll probably do the same if I was using this. So that would be my one concern with, with this technology. Lead to is AI consultant. Any thoughts on that? <laughs> I mean, I guess the one thing is that I think is good about this is that you're actually getting the patient's words and you're not filtering it through to you, which might make the consultant not trust how you got it, but here they're actually seeing what the patient has written so they might be exactly. more confident. Exactly. I think it's really valuable to have the patient's concerns and their own complaints in their own words in the medical record. And sometimes we miss that because their own ideas can be misconstrued into what we think they are and we can put words in their own mouth. You know, how many times have we gone to a meeting or to a consultation and you come away from it saying, oh, I forgot to say that or I wish I could have mentioned something. And how many times do we go back to a patient and say, sorry, I just want to ask you another follow-up question because I forgot to ask something. The whole, one of the main benefits here is we feel that when a patient has their own time in the waiting area just to put down their own thoughts and concerns without being rushed, we can then make sure that we're addressing all of their concerns and questions as well. Okay.